Welcome to the show. Hey, uh, really, really quick. Uh, this has been a great weekend. We actually started on time. Fantastic. Uh, we have a very special guest uh, today. We have Larry Mitchell, Grammy Award winning producer and guitarist. And I am so happy I, I was able to uh, meet him uh, many years ago at a, at a festival and Without further ado, let me let me uh, bring on uh, Larry. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I am doing fantastic. I feel really, really good. I I just updated all the internet here yesterday, and I have I went from uh, uh, four gigabits up to um, forty, and. Uh, oh, wow. And uh, the download is is a gigabit. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting like seven or eight hundred down, which maybe just maybe we can pull one of these off without any glitches. Okay. So well, the uh, internet is being highly used these days. So. It, sure, it sure is. It's a little crowded. So so we met uh, I think 2016 2015 somewhere around there. I uh, can't remember where it was. It was at this little guitar festival. I think they've been trying to have it, and and it, you know ran into. It's pretty hard to run one of these festivals. It's a pretty small festival, but it was. I think it was pretty well done. And yeah. and the one thing I, from that I can remember it was one. I was it was hot. I was carrying around my guitar the entire day. I was pretty weighty. I'm still pretty weighty, and I I I, <laughs> I was tired. But I I met you and you had performed. It was hot. And uh, um, you were just about one of the most cordial uh, guys that I met. You're very kind, uh, very kind to come on the show. Um, but one thing, in the afternoon, and I don't know whether I was, I don't know whether you were using the AX8 and I pro probably the H9 at the time. I can't remember. <clears throat> but, Maybe. but yeah, I, I, I don't remember. I do know it was the AX8 because was, it was like pretty brand new. And I had parked myself out front of the stage just in the right spot where the speakers I I'd found I'd found dead center. And there was something in your effects that was going and it was the it was it was the coolest yet uh, almost unnerving. I almost like it, it was so powerful uh, that I, I almost thought, am I have am I having a stroke? It was <laughs> It was, it was that good, but um, you were. You, was it this? Let, let's see. Was it stronger? It was. It was stronger. It was. It was going. It was going back and forth. Uh, did I 
and it would have to be one of these sounds. It's probably moving a little faster though. Yeah. It, it, it was just the one thing about it. It was. It was. It was the moment where I went, wow, that, you know, fractal. It, it's really, really good. And whatever they were using to put it, put the sound out, it was really good too. And your cool. play, your playing was 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 fantastic. But you know, I digress. Thank you. So, Thank you. so how long have you been playing guitar? Uh, forty-six years, I guess. Forty-seven years. Yeah, somewhere around there. And well, uh, and, and what? A long time. What led you to want to play guitar? Uh, my mom was watching through my drum set out the window. No, um, uh, I don't know. I always wanted to play guitar. Yeah. Uh, I always wanted to play drums, actually. Uh -huh. uh, but I had a toy guitar. My mom found a, a picture of me. I'm still wearing a diaper, and I got a toy guitar, and I'm strumming it left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. You know, um, when I was younger, I, uh, I wanted to play guitar, too. And uh, but I my ADD, um, I couldn't focus on it. And I had somebody who gave me in a note. I've, I think I've told people this before on the on the show. Note to self: Don't ever give a really good guitar to a teenager unless unless you know that they're really dedicated. Because I had somebody give me a, a Les Paul when I was younger, and I probably traded it for like candy or something stupid oh no yeah 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 but you know i mean you know back then i was dumb and you know i still it's, still, it's dumbness still runs in the in the uh you know but anyway uh <clears throat> so your mom your mom helped you foster the love for guitar huh <laughs> somewhat yeah uh yeah she yeah she was always kind she told me i could do whatever i wanted to do as long as i do it um but yeah, I had a uh, I had uh, toy guitars and I think I had a toy drum set that I wanted to play. And she was trying to watch TV, and I kept banging on the drums. And she said, "If you hit the keep hitting those drums, they're going out the window." And, uh, <laughs> she threw them out the window. Well, gotta love her mothers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So when when did you start playing professionally? At what age? Uh, that's a trick one. Um, kind of Probably slid 15, into it 14 15 16 i don't really remember to tell you the truth yeah. when when that that distinction happened i mean i i, I played in some bands probably 15 16 maybe I, I really don't remember when when that that line was crossed yeah so i was yeah. just happy to be playing yeah you know? well it, sh it it shows i've i've probably watched a lot of your your your, your videos for the last many years and one thing i take away from the, watching you is the the spirit the kindness that comes through your playing and you know when you are telling people like I saw a video where you're showing the uh, JBL the JBL little speakers oh yeah yeah, you, you, yeah. Know, you know I, I saw that video and I was like and, and you just want you just want to help people you just want people to know this is this is what I do and I really, uh, it's, it's just, it's a sign of, you know, one, a humble guy and, and two, somebody who has a real giving, giving spirit and, and it comes through. Thanks. I, I do enjoy what I do and I love music and, um, if I can help people, that's great. Sometimes you can't help people, but you know, I try sometimes. And, um, uh, when I find something that's cool, you know, I, I just want to share that info, you know, a lot. So, so when you started your you know your guitar career and when did you know that you like uh you you were you know cuz you, you get to a grammy at some point when did you know that you kind of made it a little bit uh i i mean you constantly I, to me you constantly redefining what making it is um in one sense, I mean, my, uh, I won a Grammy for producing and engineering, not for playing guitar. I did play guitar in the record, but it's for producing and engineering. Right. I played other instruments as well, too. But, um, uh, you know, early on, I did my first big tour in 1988. Um, 
the Miguel Bosé tour in Spain and Italy, and that was the, still the biggest crowds that I've ever played in front of. Um, and then uh, a few years later, I did the uh, My Record came out, then I did the Billy Squire tour, and then Tracy Chapman, and worked with Rico Kasich from the Cars. So that was a good that was a good lifetime of that. And then um, things changed, and then I got into producing my own stuff and then producing other singer-songwriters. And uh, I lived in New Mexico for a while, for about 10 years, and I won a, a bunch of awards there for producing and engineering. And so that was a whole, like, all right, this is a different lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I got to tour with some Native American, some great Native American artists. Uh, and then moving from there to Alabama, where I'm at now, and restarting my uh, like seriously restart i never stopped but seriously restarting my solo career my artist career uh, while still producing um has been fun and it's just like building that back up you know so it's, i feel like i've had a, quite a few different lifetimes well, lifestyle lifetimes. well you know the, the, i've been i've been working since i was 16 i'm i'm 52 well i'll be 52 in june and I've been work, I've been working since I was 16 and I didn't have a, um, a a great role model for for parents my dad was uh drunk and and my my mom was I, I love her and I love my dad but they let me just do whatever I wanted to do and I probably was a pretty hard to handle because you know with ADD early on and uh I got I was busy into everything I I stuck my hands into everything I worked on my own cars um, did all sorts of things and I think that's why I do what I do now which with uh, you know building and making things with one of my passions you know oh yeah that's cool you know uh, yeah. but without any real guidance I've just worked and worked and worked and I've done this and life changes and then you re you re you remake yourself you go like well I can't just die I can't stop so you do do something else yeah and you make it work and you do yeah. and then when that something happens you know because I remember 2008 was a really rough year for a lot of people and you just turn and make yourself and i think that's when i got back into guitar was right around 2010 so i've been trying to trying to play guitar for um well about 10 years and you know what i'm never gonna be the guy that everybody wants but but i have managed to turn my love of music into a pretty decent career where I help people help people a lot um, and you just have to remake yourself and I, th- I think that's sort of what you're you're kind of talking about is you have to you you can't just give up you have to you have to keep keep moving oh yeah I've definitely hit some roadblocks and I didn't go I didn't give up I just going around them <laughs> without, around or through <laughs> yeah without getting too too personal what was the what was the worst worst try time that you've had the worst trouble you've had to get over uh there's a lot of different things but uh uh after doing tracy chapman tour i was home for about two years and you know back then there was no internet so people didn't know you were home you know you had to be out all the time and so you start running out of money and uh and people you run into people and you go hey man when when you get off the road i I got a project for you i said i'm off the road i've been off the road for a year and a half (laughs) (laughs) and uh uh, that at that moment, um, let's see, how do I do this politically correct? <laughs> there was a gentleman who used to work at one of the guitar magazines, and he left and became a record uh, executive at a big label. And he called me up one day, and he said he was a big fan of mine. I, you know, we used to talk and stuff like that. And he wanted me to wanted me to come in and play him some material I worked on. So I worked on some songs. Did him want a four track because that's what I had. Brought him into his office and uh, he listened to half of one song and then he proceeded to tell me why um, I was not going to do well and that I was almost 30 
and uh, I should really cons- reconsider what I'm going to do and approach music differently and uh, maybe not play so in tune. <laughs> and, uh, and I left there feeling really bad. Mm. And, uh, but then a friend of mine, I knew a friend of mine said, you need to make a record on your own. I didn't want to sign any more record deals. I had been signed to five labels and not made money from any of those labels, really. And uh, so a friend of mine said, you need to make a record. I said, I don't have the money to make a record. Because back then, like now I can make a record on an iPhone. Yeah. But <laughs> you couldn't do that back then. And uh, so a friend of mine gave me, Sam gave me the keys to his house. He goes, I got gear in the basement. You go, here's the keys. You can go every day if you want and make a record. So I did. I made an acoustic record. I made an electric record that's, that was horrible never released it uh, because that was my learning experience but with the uh with the help of friends i made an acoustic record as a practice record to work on my engineering and that's what ended up coming out and being really cool really cool and that gave me the confidence to not worry about other labels and uh and over i'd say probably over the the next the following 10 years from that gave me the confidence to not worry about um what other people think so much um uh, i'm uh, you know i'm gonna i'm gonna play guitar for me i'm very happy if other people like it i'm really happy when other people like it if they don't like it it's not for everybody you can't please everybody and not everybody's style is for everyone so all i could say is i'm still making money making money i'm still making music uh, i have uh, a grammy award on the largest single largest New Mexico Music Award holder of a San Diego Music Award. And that guy um, is back at a music magazine, but in a very diminished role. <laughs> so uh, I, I, um, not that I wish anything bad on anyone, but um, uh, I shouldn't have let him get me down from the start. So I hope that if anyone else goes through that, that they don't let they don't let someone. Things, especially if you are really emotionally connected to the things you do if you really believe in what you do um i when i when five five years or so ago line six helix they it, it came out and i i had started you know kind of a little bit of a like a user group on facebook and mm-hmm. and we started and then i was doing little videos and i i do the best i can on on playing and back then I was not as good but I was I had a lot of passion okay and you know I got some there was some severe s- severe criticism of from certain people and I had somebody reach out uh, from from England uh, his name is Paul Hindmarsh and he he does a lot of the demos for the line six gear and he's he's really good and he, he told me something he says hey you can't please everybody and and don't feed the trolls don't give don't give them what they want and the the best thing i i have i have learned through this is you you just cannot please everybody so therefore do the very best at what you do and 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 appreciate and love what you've done and if somebody likes it and they gel with you great if somebody doesn't okay no problem it's not for everybody but uh you you know absolutely it it, it, (laughs) when you set your expectations lower uh for people and you say you you know you one don't assume uh don't assume that they had bad motives when they started maybe they had a bad day there's all sorts of things you could apply and when you do that when you set your expectations low then you're you won't be disappointed and you just do you set your own expectations for yourself high and you you just keep going but yeah. so with, my, yeah go ahead i was my phrase has always been i'm i'm just trying to be the best me i can be and uh and um so i'm trying to make sure that i'm happy and doing what i'm doing because there's a, there's so many other ways to make more money doing than than playing music um so i'm happy uh, as long as i'm happy doing what i'm doing then then i'm good uh, I'm not going to let anybody else ruin that happiness for, from you know, because of, so you just got to be the best you can do. Right. The best you can be. So um, when uh, when you uh, got the Grammy and you you're, you that's a different 
that's past that one bad situation, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. This was in 94, 94, 93, 94, when, uh, when, that, whole, when that happened. Uh, the Grammy came in 2007 or 8. Yeah, it's a, oh, 2007. Mm -hmm. And have have things been readily improving up all up until like 2020? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, um, think you know, there's ebb and flow, right, with the music with the music business. But um, and like I said, there was the art. There, well, you know, there's different facets of what I've been doing. So first, doing a lot of sideman stuff, and then that that that. Uh, uh, molded into or shifted into being an artist and then the artist side shifted into being a producer engineer uh, and then engineer side produced, uh, engineer producer side shifted to me between doing that and being a sideman again and then uh, and then those two shifted into me being an artist and then an engineer producer and occasionally doing the side being a sideman so, um, I'm going to be a side man for somebody as, uh, and for music I don't enjoy. Uh, and I'm not going to produce someone that I don't really like or, um, or like their music. So, uh, I'm going to do, again, I'm going to strive to, uh, be the best me I can be. And I've turned down artists that are, uh, as far as uh, as far as production um, that are really amazing, but it's just not a right fit. Uh, and I've worked with artists that uh, some people are like, why are you working with them? And then the end product is really good. But when you when you start, they're like, you know, there are other people like, ah, oh, you know, that's not that might be a waste of your time. And it's not a waste of my time. I have some of the best times with people, you know. So I work with people. I work with pe projects for the people first. Um, I got to enjoy the person yeah. and, uh, and the, you know, and the situation building up. And then there are situations where I like, you know, this is not going to work. I don't care how much money they have or what the connections are going to be and stuff like that. So, Well, oftentimes if, 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 you, if you're up against a certain personality and I, I, I do run, I, I run into certain personalities and they could have a, a lot of money and, I don't really feel motivated to work with unkind people. And, yeah. and I, when something comes along, I've, I've been in the computer repair business for a long time and I've, I've worked on computers for years and years. And there was sometimes these customers that you knew right when you met them, but you wanted to make them happy and do the job and you force yourself into it. And then you, the phrase I, came up with is no good deed goes unpunished <laughs> yeah. so uh you know with with the uh you know you have to do you have to work with people that you're going to be able to work with and uh, these these people are going to appreciate what you do even if it's even if it's not the biggest gain for you it 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 probably is the biggest gain for you because it's more than just monetary at stake in life yeah absolutely. So, so tell me let's get into guitar get gear and guitars uh okay. what what are you playing with uh right now yeah what what's your uh, what's your go-to guitar this this one is the one i always see yeah this uh, uh this i've had two years now i believe um it's a nags joe nags used to used to work at prs guitars in maryland and um, he used to run, I believe he created and ran the private stock program. So he made all the super high-end guitars at BRS, and, um, which is a high-end company to start with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, the entire, the, uh, the elite first um, uh, private stock program employees are now all at NAGS, the first ones. And uh, Joe is considered a master builder, and if you ever play one of his guitars to see him up close, you'll understand why. But it's a Severin, and this is my model. It has my uh, has my little logo there. Yeah. Um, and uh, the neck joint, the sustain, um, 
the bridge plate, which is kind of like a telly-ish Yeah, yeah, vibe. I noticed that, yeah, I like that. It, it, to help transfer sustain instead of instead of being two screws that hold the tremolo on. Uh, wood pick guard. It's not a roasted neck. This one is uh, It's just a maple neck that's maple fretboard that's, uh, and neck that's toned to match the pick yeah. guard. Um, I have in my model uh, Damasio. So I have, I've been with Damasio for 30... I want to say 35 years. Yeah, 35 years. Um, they were one of the first companies that uh, put trust and faith in me. Yeah. When I had not a whole lot and just playing around New York City. Um, so these are Damasio Area 67s. And this is a Damasio Satch Track pickup. Uh, but this is the neck version of the pickup, oh, not, okay. the, not the bridge pickup. And uh, there are locking tuners, uh, the Godos. And um, great electronics. It just it's got a 8.5 radius on the fretboard, uh, which you know if I'd stopped to think about it would have scared me because I, I I was with Ibanez guitars for 26 years and I'm pretty sure those are like 14s. Yeah, <laughs> those are the fretboards. <laughs> uh, what was that? Oh, that was uh, something in my house. <laughs> the, the, the dryer. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> no. We're over time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no. Um, um, so, so, what have you been using for effects? Um, what do you, I mean, in general, you, you're using the fractal. Um, in 2008, uh, I was playing with a lot of Native American artists in, in New Mexico. And, uh, after travel after 9 11 traveling with guitar gear became a little intense so uh if you check the pedal board a lot of times they'll pull if they can't see through it they'll pull all the effects up and unplug everything and they don't know how to put it back together uh i did a festival in in finland and uh, uh with this with this blues artist ellis hooks and we got there and we were opening up for government mule and they had opened their pedal board up and it was a it was a nightmare it was a branch or a pedal board, and um, you know it was just nothing was plugged in. Everything was just turned upside down, cables oh, wow. unplugged because they couldn't see through it. Um, so uh, I remember reading forums, and it was a guy that I, I had read um, a lot about. Uh, his name is Scott Peterson, and uh, he was talking about this new thing called the Fractal Audio Axe Effects. So I was looking at it and looking at it. I did a, as much research as I could back then. And um, I said, I got to get one. So I called up and to, to order one. I actually put my name on the, on the waiting list. And uh, months had gone by. And um, I remember a friend of mine, after I had told him about it, he put on, got on the waiting list maybe like three months after me. And uh, he called me up and goes, hey, I got that thing, the Axe Effects. It, it's pretty cool. Did you get yours? I said, no, I haven't. I go, wait, you, you were on after me. So I called up. And Cliff actually answered the phone. Cliff is the designer. Yeah, yeah. And so we're talking. And uh, I said, you know, I was on the list for a standard, uh, but I'd love an ultra. But, you know, I was on the list for a standard, but I haven't gotten called. And he goes, oh, I don't see your name in the list. And, uh, but, you know, he, he sold me an ultra. He had an ultra. They'd just come in. And uh, and that started a cool thing. And we've, what we later found out was they, changed, they had to change their list system because there was another Larry Mitchell on the list. Oh, no. So they didn't do it by email back then. They do it by email now. Yeah, yeah. But they did it by name. And so when Larry Mitchell, the other Larry Mitchell in, I think, Chicago, got his unit, they scratched that name off the list. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's why I didn't get mine. But um, So I went from the Ultra to the uh, Axe of X2 to the XL to when they came out with the uh, AX8, which is the floor version because... Uh, most of my gigs, if not all, are, are usually in a year are usually fly gigs. And then now I've just been uh, I've been a beta tester for a while uh, for the FM3, so I'm using the FM3 yeah. right now. I have an uh, XFX3 that I just in my rack in my studio, and um, uh, I use that a lot. Uh, I just haven't been traveling with it. Although, I you know if I travel at all this year, it most likely will be by car. So I might take the X Specs three out. You never know. Yeah, it's really well, cool. The uh, you know I, I I'm a Helix I'm a Helix guy. I'm 
go mm-hmm. back to the Helix and I haven't stopped. They're they're great. They're great units. Uh, I Ed, I err on the side of and this is what I tell everybody. Everybody was like, when they hear me get a fractal unit or some other thing. In fact, I did a I did a whole little series on YouTube about uh, fra- It was a, I compared the fractal. Um, it was the AX8, the uh, Helix, yep. the mm-hmm. Headrush. And the HD 500, and what I did is I ran, I ran everything into my rack, my Helix rack, and I set up an IR so they were all running through the same IR. And I took okay. I took my playing out of it, and I used these certain uh, same similar sounds uh, of playing so that everything was the same. And I tried to make this as as scientific as possible, and you know somebody will always find the hole but whatever um so what i have found is that people suffer from and 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 it's not just in gear it goes it's just a part of people it's called confirmation bias Mm -hmm. and it's whatever you perceive is your reality is what you will fight for and when when people compare fractal and and i got the the fm3 and people were like, "Which is better?" I, I, why do you care? It's not, it's not better. It's, it's not. There's not better. It's preference. They all sound great. They all sound great in the right hands. They sound amazing. Every one of them, including the Pod Bean. I've, I've heard people sound incredible with the old Pod Bean. Sure. But the yeah. the converse is true. In the wrong hands. They can sound horrible, every one of them. In the wrong hands, uh, a good uh, Mesa Boogie Mark Two C, <laughs> it's gonna sound that, bad. That's too. right. Yeah, and and listen, and, and it's not a matter of listen. I I play at a lower level than some, but I don't play too bad. And when I get in the when I when I'm in the mode, I so I like I kind of like the way I play, and I'm yeah. okay with the way I play, and that's the best thing. And I make some things sound good, and I make some things sound bad. It's okay. It we're, it's when you get in a mix. If you're in a yeah. mix, the differences are even smaller. Yeah. Hold, 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 let me say. Let me say two things. Uh, one is I have an extra for a long time for for a year. My backup for my AX8 was a, a, a Line Six HX Stomp, and a, and the Eventide H9 together. Yeah. That's my that was my backup. So the stop sounds great. It's it's really cool. I still have the stop. I'm actually looking. I've done some stuff with a uh, hot, uh, hot tone, and they ha- they I have uh, they sent me one of those Impero ones. Yeah. Uh, I, that's going to be my backup. I think for now, just because that has a built-in expression pedal. Um, it's all good. It's a great time to be a guitar player. When I when I played in 1988 through 95, I carried around a 300 pound 16 space shock mount rack with effects in it and preamps and then a 10 space shock my rack with power amps in it and two 412 cabinets and i remember, i can't tell you how many times we stuffed stuffed that stuff into my friend dave's car and um oh you got one yeah, yeah the Cer- oh, it's the this- cerberus it's the Cerberus. oh yeah yeah it's it's mm-hmm. real similar hey mm-hmm. you know why not why? and then the other thing i was going to say was uh i don't know i don't know about the levels thing um you know you play every you know if we can get it out of our heads, everybody plays. If you play with confidence, you play at a good level. That's all I could say. Because uh, there are guys that you go on stage that are, that are selling millions. Well, nobody's selling millions of records. But selling thousands of records, playing stadiums, playing, you know, big place. And, you know, maybe they know 12 chords. Maybe they know 40 songs, but they know the, the heck out of those 40 songs. And, and they play those 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 chords with the right attitude and the and the right authority, and they're rocking and they're having a blast. So, I would rather go see someone who's having a good time uh, with limited knowledge but playing it with a, with with confidence, than someone who studied and studied and studied who's gonna just sit there and judge everybody else and play a whole bunch of stuff that's not connected to anything. Well, and that's one of my things. Like, like one of my biggest all-time uh, favorites is is Gary Moore. Mm-hmm. 
Uh-huh. And and man, he he had so much emotion and so much feeling, yet could flurry, but it wasn't just for the sake of a flurry. It was a motive flurry. Mm-hmm. And you do something similar. I, I, you know, I see, I see how you play, and and you play with um, emotion. And I will always enjoy this more than um, uh, trying to say the right word. You, you'll, you, know, you know it when you see it. And when they can master the fretboard, it is amazing. It is a talent. It is a talent I don't particularly enjoy. Uh, is that sweeping shredding for the sake it it's it's amazing that you have that talent it's not a music mm-hmm. i enjoy parts of that thrown into the emotion in the in the song and that's just my that's just personal that's a personal take some people sure. really really like it some people i i ran across a video today and it was it was it was a chugging video and i i can't play metal i'm not a metal guy but i would he was really into it, and it actually sounded really good. But I also noticed the simplicity of of the right hand or the left hand, and it was all in his in his right hand, which it is with most people who play. A lot of it's just in their right hand. I can't sync the two up. When when my brain ain't working, it ain't working. But you know, it's just people's different taste. So sure. you might have something you want to share with everybody play play for a minute oh i could um you know just you know nothing nothing crazy you don't want to put you on the spot but uh so what's going to play was uh there's a song from my first record <laughs> yeah, and i'm actually using the virtual capo oh nice uh, yeah, but, but not to divert, but seeing as you mentioned that, that's the new thing, uh-huh. the fractal. How is it? Did the milliseconds um, uh, get lower on the uh, the delay? Is it pretty good? I haven't used. Uh, I think so. Um, that's the, they they don't they've only done that update for the three. Right. I'm actually using the FM three right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, I think it is better on the on the three. But it, I'm still using FM three. Is it it's a ba- it, now? Is this FM three? Is this the beta update? The the one they just did? Yes. I know they didn't say they addressed something, but I tested it before the beta, and it was like 17 milliseconds. I could see the gap. But when I did the update, I mm-hmm. it feels tighter even though they so they may have done some optimization in the cpu or something but oh it yeah, does, yeah it does feel uh, i i didn't notice i noticed it right away when i first plugged in i was like Ooh, oh oh i'm not good enough for 17 milliseconds um <laughs> but but yeah. w- when i tried it i tried it afterwards and it, it's really good it's really good so well remember they're still in, in firmware one something right so yeah, all i can tell you since i've been using fractal stuff since 2008 2007 um the first are some giant leaps between the first firmware one and firmware three four. Oh yeah and then, then it kind of usually mellows out and there's some cool stuff and then a lot of times like seven eight nine ten Firmware is where Cliff has some epiphanies and uh, things change again. But this is firmware one. Yeah. And uh, it's every firmware. I expect things to, to get um, better. And they're also there. I think the goal is to make it as compatible with the Axe FX3 as possible. Just like the Helix uh, and the HX Stomp and the Helix are very compatible. Yeah. Swap patches back and forth. Um, so, yeah, it, it probably is a little bit better. Uh, but I was going to show you that, so for those who don't know what a virtual capo is, um, if you know what a capo is, a capo lets you put choke off part of the fretboard and uh, and start as if these, say, from here, the second fret is the open open strings instead of, instead of from here, or the, or the fifth fret, or, you know, vice versa. Um, the reason I'm using it, so it, the reason I'm using a virtual capo is Because uh, on my first record, the first song is called In God We Trust. And um, 
after I came back from Spain doing a tour at Miguel Bosé, uh, Richard Lasner was the head of our relations at the time. He goes, you know, what do you what do you want? Do you, do you want anything? Do you need anything? I said, you know, Rich, I've always wanted a double neck. I used to be in a Rush cover band back in high school, <laughs> right out of high school. And I always wanted a double neck. He goes, all right, yeah, we can make you a double neck. And when we started making the double neck, they were making, uh, Mace Bailey had made Steve Vai's uh, triple neck heart-shaped guitar. And um, I was like, oh, that's cool. And they go, yeah, he's got this thing called a D-neck. I'm like, what's that? So they explained that. And uh, they put one on the heart-shaped guitar, and there were three D-necks made uh, for Steve Vai. And right after that, he got into the seven strings, so he didn't want the D-necks anymore. Uh, he has two. I have the third one with Steve's blessing back then oh, nice. although he forgot about it recently <laughs> <laughs> um as i brought it up uh, maybe maybe six months ago maybe a year ago was that somewhere at, around uh, there. via academy uh no we were just talking oh, about just talking. stuff okay but uh i said yeah you know i have that d-neck he goes what's that <laughs> so it's, it's one of the necks on your uh on your heart, triple neck goes oh yeah yeah he goes how do you have it he said, you said i could have it so <laughs> uh, but anyway so the d-neck has two frets past zero fret. Okay. So the, the strings are and uh, and then but everything else is the same spot. The harmonics are, are a different spot, but everything else is the same spot. So I wrote a song around it, and uh, so the riff is. Uh, so I need that open C. I drew that on here. So I hadn't played that song because I can't lift the double neck anymore. <laughs> it's ridiculously heavy. Uh, I hadn't played that song live in maybe 15 years <laughs> or more. And uh, when the virtual capo, I was like, let me try and see if I can make this work. And I, I'm loving it. I'm glad that I used to start my shows with this song. So, yeah, yeah. Oh I, uh, I, I watched one of your shows and, and uh, I, I think I remember this, so. All right, so here we go. So this is, uh, see if I can remember how to play it now. Now right, I'm talking about it. I don't play well sitting down, too, by the way.
I don't. I, I'm not used to playing sitting down. And then uh, the other thing that's cool, that uh, I have to do is so the the main part of the song is drop tune to the whole step. But when I do the solo, I switch to the capos off. So. <laughs> wasn't but <laughs> it is what it is it, it, it uh, definitely gets the uh the old, the old blump blood pumping <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me I'm, i do not have covid but um okay. <laughs> uh, so that's fantastic um i loved every minute of that and it sounded wonderful and people are people are uh uh, saying very much they like it and uh, Trevor Klein says uh, love the nags and then I wanted to thank uh, um, Steve Sterlachi for the uh, $5 super chat thank you uh, I just realized I could see the comments <laughs> oh okay there you go <laughs> yeah. so uh, I might have to put glasses on here <laughs> hey, l- um, you know uh, I-, I have them too I happen to be able to sort of see because it's big. <laughs> cool. Yeah, we got Jack Rabbit. <laughs> Jack the Rabbit wasn't able to hang out, but you know, he'll he'll watch it later. So. Um, Jay is on here. Seven over eight. Over eight. Cool. Trevor, I love the nags too. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, so where does it go after this COVID? What is there something that you th- you're thinking may uh, have to change in the future? Where, where do you see music going? I mean, I actually kind of think about like like um, Nam this year. There may be there may be no Nam this year. Uh, the 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 winter one. Um, yeah, the summer Nam is it's canceled. It's gone, yeah. Uh, winter Nam, even if they do have it, it's going to be that's way hundred, different. That, that's a hundred thousand people on a on a Friday and Saturday there. Um, how many people are going to want to go? And two, if there's no vaccine by then, you have to think uh, a good percentage of the people that go to Nam are from all over the world. Oh, I know. Yeah. So. When you come into, I, I, I imagine like right now, if you fly to another country, um, they probably want you to isolate yourself for 14 days in a hotel. Right. So who can afford to do that? I mean, touring acts can't do that, but you know, a business company coming over to do Winter Nam, you gotta you gotta put 14 days in whole, the hotel your, your room. Your whole your whole crew. <laughs> the whole crew for yeah. 14 days before Nam, and then probably coming back into your home country you probably have to isolate for 14 days as well but at least in your house probably i'm I'm afraid it's going to be changing so i imagine there'll be a lot of while they wouldn't be able to use the nam name but i bet i imagine there's going to be a lot of companies that develop some sort of a you know virtual way to to do it there's got to be some somebody's going to think outside of the box is i i guess what's going to have to happen and then I, i know that like uh, venues, uh, all new rules. You have, uh, Vince Janelle, Janelle says mm-hmm. uh, all new rules. Yeah, yeah. And you know, um, I, I've seen a lot of um, virtual jam sessions, or there's nothing really good enough that gives you that latency-free jamming together. It just doesn't work. So what I've seen a lot of people do. <clears throat> Steve, Steve goes. How will how will COVID affect the Nam sound policies? <laughs> <laughs> it's too loud. It's turn too it loud. Down. Too loud. Turn it down. <laughs> I know you're in your own living room, but turn it down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're gonna they're gonna come in and put a tag on your your house. <laughs> um, but you know, so what they're doing is like I know this one local um photographer he's creating a little space and he's got cameras and everything and he, he, they just did uh one a friend of mine who's in a band the band is uh t- the tim taylor band and uh 
they did a whole like two hours yes they went to a facility did it and they did it online while you still losing something it was enjoyable it was enjoyable but it's missing that personal thing i mean i know we have that new normal they want to talk about and i i'm honestly i i don't know how can we put a bass player in their own room (laughs) steve (laughs) yes yes you can put the bass player in in his own room (laughs) but you know i i don't know that i totally want the new normal because the the old way of you know while i know there's some dangers involved you know it's personal touch personal uh being around people the the energy that you get from live music and you know last time i played live i I really enjoyed it and you know whether anybody in the audience enjoyed it i did see so that's good if you enjoy it then somebody in the audience enjoyed it as well i I think so i think so and i i was able to cherry pick a few good sound clips out of it (laughs) put those online (laughs) so um well, you know, Larry, I really thank you for being here, and I like to keep these things. Uh, we're at five. We're at five minutes away from a, an hour. Um, okay. Any final thoughts? Anything you can say to somebody maybe who is up and coming, wants to be a musician? Forget the rules of social distancing and all that. Just somebody who wants to enjoy it. What's What's your takeaway? Just do it. Just do it. If you're going to do it, um, first of all, everybody should play an instrument somehow. Uh, And you should pursue music if you enjoy it, if you love it. It is not for everyone to do it professionally, especially now. It's like it's it's getting harder and harder. But um, that shouldn't stop you from doing music because you enjoy it. There's plenty of people that enjoy, that work a full-time job and they enjoy their hobby of playing music. Playing music is a beautiful thing, and sharing it with people is a beautiful thing. Um, First, do it for the right reasons, and then if you go, all right, I can't see myself doing anything else, uh, then then do it, then pursue, figure out how to how to make a living at it. But um, you got to do it for the right reason first. You know, there's lots of people that get in music for 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 some for the wrong reasons, and then they get very frustrated, very discouraged, Mm. and and become bitter about it, but you don't want to do that. You want to you want to do music for the right reasons, and then you figure out. And if you go, I absolutely I cannot live with myself if I don't do this all the time. Then you have to figure out how to make make a living in it. And if you truly love it, you'll figure out how to do it. You'll figure something. You'll figure what you have to sacrifice when you do have to sacrifice, and when you don't have to sacrifice, you'll be fine. Very very good words, and you know. I totally agree. And, and don't have any preconceived, if you want to make money in the music business, don't have a preconceived, well, I need to do it this way to make money in the music business. Because I'm here to tell you that I make money in the music business and I do it in all sorts of different ways. I, I, I do photography. Mm-hmm. People love, people love my photo. That's a craft that goes along with music. I'm also a musician. I, I, I enjoy that and I make money with my gear reviews. I make money with my stuff that I create, you know, the skins, the yeah. skins awesome. and screen guards and all that, you know, it, I'm still connected to music and, I, and, and then, and then we have, you know, groups on the internet. One of the fractal groups we have, it's got, it's got a lot of, a lot of people in it. Uh, the probably one of the largest that I know of is the Helix Group, and it's we just uh, we just topped uh, twenty eight thousand five hundred members. Oh, cool! Very cool. And, you know, and and so you can be in music that way. You can start a YouTube channel, and you know what? I guarantee you, if if you just start and you show you play guitar and you play something simple and you put it on YouTube, don't expect to have a million subscribers overnight or ever just do it for the fun of it Mm -hmm. just do it for because it's fun and that's the only reason i i i I, when i first a a few years ago i really wanted to make youtube and i really worked at it and i tried 
And then I realized I'm doing it for the wrong reason. And when I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it because I want to and I want to have fun. And I want to talk to nice people and, and do this. Takes all the stress away and it's really enjoyable. And, you know, somebody wants to see this. I, yes. I, I'm glad I wanted to. I, I'm glad you came on and I'm glad you were so kind to come on. So uh, thank you very much. Do you have uh, one final thing? Do you have a lick, any kind of simple lick you could teach somebody uh in a in, in a matter of a minute is there some sort of cool trick or lick or anything uh yeah here's a, a you know uh, most people are familiar with an a minor pentatonic yes like a blue scale or actually <laughs> well you could play it on two strings <laughs> not as the main riff but as a in between riff does that make sense at yeah all? yeah no no it makes sense to me and and i really like it's thinking outside of the yeah I'm, <laughs> somebody says he goes he chad's making the guitar face yeah i i i, I was you were playing i'm i'm doing the guitar face because i'm like yeah yeah <laughs> so you yes, do a traditional lick <laughs> And then do the fast like to get you to another uh, <laughs> uh, So uh let's see. That's a good one. So here's your traditional lick. Here's your fast lick. It's all the same. How's that? Very, very nice. Thank you very much. You've been very, sure. very cordial. Go ahead and, and stay. I'm going to do a little goodbye, and I'll talk to you okay. right after we're, we're done. Hold okay. on. Okay. Cool. So, thank you, everybody, for watching. <laughs> so um, thank you, everybody, for coming and joining uh, Larry for an hour. And uh, next week we're going to have... Ben Adrian from Line 6. He's the sound architect. Uh, same time, uh, 7 p.m. on Sunday, Ben Adrian from Line 6, Yamaha Guitar Group. And uh, people know who he is, and he's the master of uh, master of all things uh, sound nerdy. So uh, uh, take you to Gear by Siba, and then we're out of here. Yeah, maybe. Hang on, we'll play. 
We'll play that one. Here we go. Bye-bye. Okay. In breath.